Hello everyone, in today's video we are going to cover section 10.4, secants and tangents. After studying this section, you will be able to identify secant and tangent lines, identify secant and tangent segments, distinguish between two types of tangent circles, and recognize common internal and common external tangents. First looking at secant and tangent lines, some lines and circles have special relationships. Let's look at two of these definitions. The first, a secant is a line that intersects a circle at exactly two points. Every secant contains a chord of the circle. So we can see here this line here, line AB, is our secant line because it contains two points of the circle A and B. It contains chord AB and it touches the circle at exactly two points. Now a tangent line is a line that intersects a circle at exactly Exactly one point. The point that it touches is called the point of tangency or point of contact. So this line here, line T, is my tangent line and the point of contact is point T here. So it touches the circle at exactly one point. Now with tangent lines I have the following two postulates and we can use the diagrams above to show what these postulates are. The first being a tangent line is perpendicular to the radius drawn to the point of contact. And the second, if a line is perpendicular to a radius at its outer endpoint, then it's tangent to the circle. So if I look at my three diagrams, I can see that I have a radius drawn to the point of contact of a tangent line. What my first postulate is saying is that this radius will be perpendicular in each one of these diagrams to this tangent line. And then my second postulate, if a line is perpendicular to a radius at its outer end point, then it is tangent to the circle. So it's essentially the converse of my first postulate. If I have perpendicular to the radius drawn at its outer end point, then it's tangent to the circle. Next, looking at secant and tangent segments. So just like secant and tangent lines, I can also have segments instead of lines. First, a tangent segment is the part of a tangent line between the point of contact and a point outside the circle. So my figure to the right, I can see that T is my point of contact and P is the point outside the circle, making tangent segment PT. Next, a secant segment is the part of a secant line that joins a point outside the circle to the farther intersection point of a secant and the circle. So in my figure to the right, I can see that R and Q are my secant points, and then P would be my external part, making PR my entire secant segment. Now the external part of a secant segment is the part of a secant line that joins the outside point to the nearer intersection point. So that would be PQ. So PQ is the external part of my secant segment PR. With tangent segments, there's a very important theorem called the two tangent theorem. It is if two tangent segments are drawn to a circle from an external point, then those segments are congruent. So looking at my figure to the right, we're given circle O, PX and PY are tangent segments. I want to show that PX is congruent to PY. I can do this by using congruent triangles. I know that OX is congruent to OY because those are radii. I know that OP is congruent to OP because that's reflexive property. And I can show that angle Y is congruent to angle X because they're both right angles because I know that radii drawn to the point of contact of a tangent segment is perpendicular. Therefore, X and Y would be right angles. Now my triangles are congruent, and XP would be congruent to PY by CPCTC. Therefore, that proves the two-tangent theorem. If two tangent segments are drawn to a circle from an external point, then those segments are congruent. Now with tangency, we can also have tangent circles. So tangent circles are circles that intersect each other at exactly one point. Now we can have external tangent or internal tangent. Remember, external means outside, internal means inside. So two circles that are externally tangent are circles that lie outside the other. So in my left-handed figure, I can see that both circles don't overlap and they intersect at point T. Now, two circles that are internally tangent are circles that lie inside the other. So my right-handed figure, I can see that circle P lies within circle Q and they touch at point T. Notice that in each case of the tangent circles, they have one common tangent at their point of contact, again, point T. They also have the point of contact lie on the lie of centers, which is line PQ for both of them. And lastly, looking at common tangents, so a common tangent is a line that joins my points of contact of two circles. Now we can have common internal tangents or common external tangents. So looking at my figure above, I have line PQ. This is what's called the line of centers or the line that joins the centers of the circles. 
x, y is my common internal tangent. A common internal tangent lies between the circles and it intersects the segment that joins the centers or line PQ. And then AB is my common external tangent, where a common external tangent is not between the circles and it does not intersect the segment that joins the circles. So a common internal tangent lies between the circles, where a common external tangent lies outside of the circles. Now looking at our sample problems, problem two, TP is tangent to circle O at T. The radius of circle O is eight millimeters. Tangent segment TP is six millimeters long. Find the length of OP. So I wanna find OP, that's X. TP we know is six. If I draw in radii OT, I know this is eight. Now I know at the point of contact, the radii is perpendicular. Therefore, this triangle is a right triangle. So I can use Pythagorean theorem to find OP. This is a Pythagorean triple, six, eight, 10. 10, so the length of OP is 10 millimeters long. Next, looking at problem three, a circle with a radius of eight centimeters is externally tangent to a circle with a radius of 18 centimeters. Find the length of the common external tangent. The common external tangent would be segment AB, which is labeled X. Now I know that these circles are externally tangent, meaning they touch at one point that's in between the circles, say right here. Now if I draw in my line of centers, segment QP, I can see that QP would have a length of 26 units long because Q has a radius of 18, P has a radius of eight. If they're externally tangent, these circles would touch, meaning this line of centers would be continuous from center Q to center P, making it 18 plus eight, which is 26. Now I also know that A and B, these angles would be right angles because the radii drawn to the point of tangency creates perpendicular lines. If I can draw in a line that would go through point P that is parallel to AB, this would create a rectangle. Let's call the line through point P line PR. And now this is a rectangle here, making BP 8 and AR 8 as well. And that would also make RP X and QR would be 18 minus eight, which is 10. So now I've created this other triangle with a leg of 10, another leg of X, and then my hypotenuse of 26. And I can see that this X here, the segment RP, is the same as AB because I created that rectangle. So if I can find X, then that's the length of the common external tangent. Now I could use Pythagorean theorem since this is right triangle, or I can see that this is a triple, a modification of 5, 12, 13. So this is 10, 24, 26. So AB is 24 centimeters long. Now with these problems, there's a common tangent procedure that we can follow to solve. First, we wanna draw the segment joining the centers. Then we'll draw the radii to the points of contact. Through the center of the smaller circle, we'll draw a line parallel to the common tangent. Observe that this line will intersect the radius of the larger circle. Sometimes we might need to extend this line and we wanna form a rectangle and a right triangle. Then we'll use the Pythagorean theorem and properties of rectangle to find the length of this tangent. Looking at my last sample problem, problem four, a walk around problem. We're given each side of the quadrilateral ABCD is tangent to the circle at the points. AB is 10, BC is 15, AD is 18, I wanna find the length of CD. Now, since the circle is tangent to the quadrilateral, that means I can use my two tangent theorem to show that all these tangent segments are congruent to each other. Now, I can use this fact to show what side CD would be. So I'm gonna start at any side that I want and label it X. I like to start at side CD and label one of those tangent segments X. Now I'm just gonna walk around the problem counterclockwise until I get to my last tangent segment. So if this segment here that I labeled X is X, then this segment would be also X because they're congruent. I know side BC is 15, so this segment here would be 15 minus X. 
this segment is congruent to the 15 minus x, so we also have 15 minus x. Now I have segment AB was 10, so now this segment here is 10 minus 15 minus x. Again, these segments are congruent, 10 minus 15 minus x. I'm going to simplify just to make it a little bit easier on myself. This would simplify to negative 5 plus x. Now I have 18 minus negative 5 plus x, which gives me a simplified version of 18 plus 5 minus x, which would be 23 minus x. And now I can see that my side CD has my two segments of 23 minus x and x. So 23 minus x plus x would be the length of CD. Negative x plus x would go to 0, so CD is just a length of 23.